Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 266. We're in September, September 5th at that. And for those of you with us right here, right now, welcome. Uh, go ahead and say hi, we'll do roll call on the next slide. But for those of you that are not with us right here, right now, you're watching a recording. So all of you that are here, you're being recorded. All of you that are not, well, um, you're welcome. You have a recording. All right, uh, what are we covering? And I don't have that thing set. All right, there we go. Okay, roll call, agenda. Uh, we're doing what we did last week, last meeting, not last week, that was two weeks ago. And everything is gonna be exactly the same as uh, the last two weeks. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, go talk about what's 402. We'll do triage and then we'll take any questions, comments, things that people wanna talk about. Which 402, uh, we still don't have final confirmation. So I put this tentative, well, I guess we'll just slip another couple of weeks because that's what we've been doing without the final confirmation, um, whatever. But at a certain level, it's kind of like, how long do we want to keep going? And Bob, do you want to like, do you have any feelings? Should we just like, you know, declare victory or do we just keep, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah, well, it's, it's tough. I mean, personally, I, I think we're fine. We could ship any time. It's, it's just, you know, back to the, well, what, what happens if, what if we're wrong and yeah, we have to wrong. do a 403? I guess we have to um, do a 403, but. Which is, I mean, I, you know, a, a, a certain amount of work, mostly for you. So I don't, yeah, I don't it's a, it's a block of that. work. Yeah, I don't want to get in the um, habit of doing these. But on the other hand, it, you know, it means we're pushing a new release out on, on nougat.org. So um, everybody can see it and go, ooh, 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 new stuff. Let me go get that. Yeah, and, you know, uh a couple of bugs in 402 are interesting. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, though, they're not. And yeah. Especially if we had to split into a 403, it's just like, this is extremely esoteric. Yes, yeah. it is. I mean, if anything had been interesting, we would have done 402 already, and we would have just been talking about 403. Yeah, exactly. I mean, really, but the, that's the truth. But yeah, it's kind of, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'd be fine if we slip it another week or two. You want to split the difference and go for 12 and then... Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I'm I think gonna, that's fine. I'm not I gonna should know by the 11th. Right. I know Labor Day also throws all the things off on Mondays and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to draw that line, Sam. We're going to do 12. Um, there's a little bit of work to do on the end of that anyway, so I think that'll be... How much more delay could 403 take before it just becomes 5 I mean, th there's that point to Zach. I mean, we're, we're still working our way through the, the tighter schedules. The thing is that if you look at all the five work planned, Bob has made good progress and Rob has not. So um, more of these things is not stuff to be doing. All right. But I like the idea of splitting the difference here. Um, let's go 12 and then we'll see what happens, right? That works. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. That's 402. We're going to, this is going to change to be not 19. You know, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to real quick. Um, I'm going to change just so it ends up correct. For anybody watching the meeting, if I push up, yay, start chart, please. Uh, that's what we're going to do. September 12th. I'm going to put less of a question mark. Um, all right. So there we go. That's the question. I'd make five features for a bucks and have people sponsor the DevOps cost you should be. Well, to be, to be clear, Christopher, 402 two has fixes for a paying customer that is doing the work of validating. And so very large system had crushed a couple edge cases in Wix and that's what 402 is about. And that's why we've kind of been holding it going, you know, get their last validation, but it just takes time. And at some point we're like, we think it's good. So let's go with it instead of keep talking about it every week. That's kind of where it's at. All right. So that's 402. Let's go talk about bugs, things going in the 405 or 405. Wow. No, wow. not 405. No, no. there's none. No, 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 no. Into five or I don't know, maybe something. All right, let's talk about it because we got some things out here. Uh, Bob, you ready? Since I can't talk about what this thing is. Yeah, yes. actually too many of these bugs are mine. Yeah, I told you this meeting was all based on how much. Yeah, doing. I know. I know. All right. Um, uh, triage, whip. This is, we're going to start right up top with Bob at 7605. The default major upgrade behavior localized error messages is back for discussion. Yes. That was know. mostly dependent on you. Yeah. See, ha -ha, turning it around. Nicely done. I'm not Thank done. I, I'm not okay. done. 
All right. This is about the whole default standard lib and the overridable symbols and things like that, right? Yep. That's yep. what this all comes up. Making sure I, I haven't lost it. My memory is not as good, or I just have too many things in my brain. So, all right. Uh, yes, that, that, and that. Okay. Um, we're going to have to wait until next meeting because I'm not there yet. Cool. I really need to do a test and I really want to, but as we'll see, I found a bug. So we're going to be going that direction first. All right. 7677 netfx.net compatibility check. Custom action badly fragmented. You've already fixed this, Bob. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not showing up in my query. Because um, it's I closed? It's, it's done. Yeah. yeah it, well, I'm saying it's not showing up in your query probably because it's closed. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah, this was a bad thing. What was it? Bringing in too many custom actions? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you get the one thing. The funny thing is that it's almost right happened. I remember I see this come in almost right after I talked about refactoring code in the deployment dojo. I should go back yeah, and make, make this a... Exactly a, what this was, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I, I should have gone back and said, here's a real world case of why if you get it wrong, you get these behaviors and what you don't want. And ta-da. Anyway, uh... Yep, very good, very good. We should definitely have that fixed. All right, 7688, Wix XE deletes output folder if it's a symlink. Interesting. So you create a symlink to your output folder and then you tell Wix to build to that output folder and then for some reason we delete the folder during the processing and then the symlink is broken and probably weird things happen, yeah. We'll compile the MSI and then wipe out the output symlink and then recreate it being empty. Okay. Okay. And then copy files to output directory fails. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. Someone could fix that. We can make that up for grabs. Sounds cute. Someone wants to go play with symlinks and such in the build system. Let me take a fix for The cutest thing in Wix is the build system. Yeah, well, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where that's getting deleted. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, sure, cool. We take that if someone fix it. All right, 7694, firewall extension support for all Windows Vista plus firewall properties. Okay. Oh, it's a feature request. Complex fire rules, I see. All these, all this functionality in, in Wix, right. Okay. Yeah, the original firewall extension I did back yeah. in the day, um, it was for Flight Simulator, actually, and the only bits we needed were the at the XP, SP2 level. Um, during 3X, uh, someone came along and added more of the, the Vista uh, firewall support, but it was oh. a subset. Uh, actually, it went through a couple rounds of that, as I recall. Um, and now we have someone very interested in, in flushing it out. Cool. And so I see you've less, uh, all of this has happened since the last meeting, which is kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow, lots happening here. I, I, I saw this going by and I've not looked at it at all. All right. So Bob, you've asked questions here of triage at the end of adding more functionality to the firewall custom actions. Yep. Should I read them or um, do you want to? If in, uh, all right, I'll read them. Uh, okay. Because I have them in front of me and you don't have to delay them. If there's no behavior changes, can the schema namespace stay the same between four and five? No behavior changes. If there's no right. language so, changes, definitely the schema well, should be able to stay. Yeah. So, so I mean, we've talked about this elsewhere. Um, right now, all of the, the work that we've proposed for Wix 5 is backward compatible with Wix 4. Right. With the Wix4 right. schema. Um, so there's, I think, still an open question about whether for Wix5 we should, I'll use that language, change the, the schema namespace. Um, changing the schema namespace means that, you know, you have to do some editing and or um, run Wix convert. Um, if we are... 100% backward compatible, we don't have to change the namespace. And it means that upgrading to v5, even though it's a major version upgrade, would be, you know, 
changing a four in the Wix Proj to a five. It, it'd be it'd be very interesting. Something we've never done in a major version of Wix, but obviously with our new annual cadence, we're looking at new things. Um, so this is kind of the first, um, I think, written down question about that. Um, on the other hand, if there are behavior changes, I'll just go ahead and read the next bullet. Um, do we have to change the namespace? Uh, this is the advantage of changing the namespace is that it forces, you know, at least some um, thought process. The Wix convert command, as as it works today, can mitigate behavior changes sometimes. So we've talked about um, in this issue. If you go back and read all the comments. Um, making some better defaults, but their behavior changes. So if we were, if we wanted to keep the, the namespace the same, and I will go ahead and say, I think that's a positive goal that we should consider, what happens with behavior changes? Um, so kind of reading between the lines, because whoever wrote this didn't put it in, um, could we do both? Could we, you know, keep the namespace the same for most of the language, but change it for circumstances like this where behavior changes and we want to, you know, encourage um, some 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 kind of process? Again, Wix convert can. In this case, Wix convert could do the right thing and uh, change the you know, update the authoring. But then we have this kind of weird case where we have you know a v4 in one file and a v5 in the other, um, which is a nice segue um, into the next thing, which is um, one of the things I did somewhat painfully in v4 was to add prefixes to table names and custom action names so that theoretically we could mix and match uh, v3 or even v2 for that matter and uh, v4 when stuff came in through merge modules. Um, because, you know, well, one, we wanted, the, we wanted to make sure that scenario works um, although that's an interesting topic you might want to consider on tomorrow's Deployment <laughs> Dojo episode. Yeah, we'll see. This is Like this and is... subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Um, this, you're, yeah, uh, glad to help. Um, I want to cut of the merge. The, the, the table names have to change because merge modules you know, just embed the table names. So if there's any incompatibility in the table, in the tables, then we, the names have to change. So for Wix4, we settled, hey, we'll have Wix4, and we can increase the number, hopefully, so that it you know stays synced to the major version of Wix, but really it's just supposed to be you know a version number. Um, so the problem here is that it, for this extension, we have um, uh, additional columns, so we want to change the name. Sorry, we have additional columns, which theoretically would be okay, um, but we also have uh, ch slightly changed column types. Mm, yeah, that's not good. That won't. Yeah. So, I, I, I asserted that the prefix has to change for that compatibility. Um, now, we, we haven't had the scenario yet, but. In this case, the current custom action would work or could work with both the V4 and the V5 tables. Um, but that's an additional burden, and actually, it's it's a it's a more annoying problem than I thought because the custom actions have ignore modularization set to yes, 
which seems very common, but it means that there's an additional burden of backward compatibility on the custom actions. And I don't know why we ignore modularization. Um, that might be an interesting, you know, Wix online meeting after dark discussion. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm certain the reason was to avoid getting the same custom actions merged in many times. I'm sure, but now we have a problem in that, um, well, it's not necessarily a problem. That's what the prefix is for. Right. Right. So the problem here is right now the prefix is set globally. So I think the right answer is to when we run into a change like this, to change them locally only. And this kind of gets into the whole, the whole problem of, of, um, you know, how do we, how do we present this when their behavior changes? Um, the other thing to consider is that the table name prefix is not nearly as automated as the custom action prefix is because the custom, table prefix is baked into queries and mm -hmm. native code and it's just that's what you know global search and replace is for mm, yeah so my i get one option is to is to update everything for every major release um that's a fair chunk of work it's a lot easier than it was the first time naturally because I had to do the first time now it's easy but it does mean we can get into a case where the custom action prefix would be would be wrong quote unquote wrong it'd be different than the than the custom table prefix or we update everything which is even more work if the custom table change if the table column definitions change then you're going to have to create you have to change the name of the table yep there's there's no way around that because yep. they won't merge by merge mom um if they don't match so that's 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 easy that's the bottom one but that one's also the most invisible So then if there are no behavior changes before keeping the same schema is an option. Right. The, this change up here, was this a breaking change or was it a subtle behavior change? I was trying to understand. Well, what's the difference? Well, one is it won't compile, and one is it compiles. It's just the Boolean is flipped, which I thought was maybe what this was saying. Yes, which makes it worse. Yeah, that right? makes it you really find, tricky. Yeah, you, you have only at runtime do you discover the behavior change. Correct. That one's tricky. Um, if you break, if the schema changes. then I think you have to go to V5. I agree. Now, this takes me back to wanting to kick all the extensions out <laughs> and let them run on their own. Which is I mean, basically what we're talking about here. It's just that, you know, because they are together um, right now, the, uh, there's just some state that is shared globally, like the custom action prefix. But not the table prefix. The custom action prefix is global? Mm. Quote unquote global. It's global per, it's global for all the extensions, yes. Mm. I see. That may Because have... again, it's the same thing, right? It's, you know, if x86, your prefix, you know, or that's the suffix. Yeah, but yeah. The prefix is global, yes. So it would be work to make it set so the prefix was per extension. That would be Well, work. it's, it would be work per extension. Right. So, well, so right now there's no planned V5 work 
in any of the other extensions. Correct. Undoubtedly, some will sneak into util, it being the kitchen sink extension, but there's nothing else planned. Yeah, uh, but yeah. This is unplanned. So I'm fine if it stays global except for, you know, firewall or any other extension where we, yeah, you know, need to make a change. So, and by global, do you mean you change all the extensions to be Wix 5 tables or do you no. own, okay, you only change no. firewall so, to be a Wix 5 prefix? I, I, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't touch something if it doesn't need to be touched. Right. Um, I, because again, the, the, the native code does not have a lot of, there, there's no support in the native code for the table prefix. There's support for the custom action prefix and suffix, right? but not right. for the table prefix, just because there are so many places where that you know, is a thing. Um, so I definitely don't want to go global search and replacing for, for table names. When it becomes necessary is when you do it, is my thinking. So that means most of the custom actions will keep with Wix 4 tables because they haven't changed. Firewall, at this point in time, be the only one that had a Wix 5 table in it, name in it. Right. In general, there's no behavior difference between all the um, extensions when you switch from 4 to 5, um, which is fine. The schema stays the same for everybody that doesn't have a breaking change in it which could be the firewall if this was designed in a way to avoid that um to avoid the breaking change but maybe the breaking change is the right thing to do so then you have to change the schema number to five well again i'm 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 only talking about behavior changes breaking changes aren't as you define them breaking changes are not happening the the v4 a v4 firewall except an element would compile just fine in V5 if the namespace didn't change, but the behavior would be slightly different. Subtly different. Like uh, detectable only at runtime different. Right. And, and so that's the, the, that's the thing that we're elevating to a breaking change, right? It's the, I mean, this behavior flipped or whatever. I mean, it's, it's flipped. I, I haven't looked closely at it, but something like that, right? Something yeah, flips yeah. from enabled to disabled by default because that makes more sense. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's that's the, yeah, because that's the trigger. Because then you want Wixcop to flip that for you. Correct. And Wixcop needs the schema to know if it needs to flip it or not. Yep. So I, I think that's the only way right now that that works. Yeah, I, I yeah. think that's okay. that's it. And I don't think it has to then go cascading through the rest of the world. Okay. It's just a little weird. Well, this so, corner. I mean, this well, is... Again, to, to be, we haven't discussed that. I, I, I have that as an aspirational goal. I think it'd be really cool if Wix 5 did not change the, the schema namespace and you could just start using it and get all the cool new things like naked files. But we've never done that before because this is the first time we have planned a major release of Wix and not planned on, on extensive breaking changes. Yeah, and breaking the world, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and, and this goes down the same line that I've been talking of trying to get, well, honestly, to get namespaces less and less prevalent. Yep. so that we can do more and more things. Essentially, move ourselves more towards modern languages like C-sharp and Rust and those guys that can handle these things um, in the compiler and the right things happen. Right. Um, now, the extensions all have to rev today because the interfaces are all revving today. So there's a whole new version of things that go up that need to get merged up. The, all the extensions have to get released again to work against Wix 5. So we're not that far yet. Oh, because you have already made a breaking interface change. Correct. Okay. But I mean, at a certain level, this is kind of the, we need to start 
marching down this path to see how far we can go with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and again, these are these are two different things, though, right? This is the implementation of an extension versus the use of an extension versus the use of the core tool set. Yeah, but yeah, but it all goes together. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's 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 it, it really comes down to how far can we stretch this the the concept um, without it bleeding over into the, sorry, how far can we stretch the internal, the internals concepts without it bleeding over into what the, the language sees. Right. So even though we have to rebuild everything, it doesn't necessarily follow that. You know, the language has to change. For yeah. Example. Well, and, and to be fair, like .NET rebuilds all their libraries and such. Oh, every sure. Version two, even though I go and look and like, all right, how is this different from this particularly very edge case library different from six to seven? And the answer is built with new compiler. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> and, you know, which may give it a lot of benefits because the compiler keeps getting smarter yeah. in C sharp's case. Um, and but that's the difference. And we're going to have the same thing in Wix for a lot of our. Uh, extensions. The challenge for us is that we also have a namespace that C Sharp does not have that you also have to update. So if that's that's this wild card on top that we need to start working our way through all the problems of maintaining that. And I don't know that I want to force a roll forward every time where you have to run Wixcop across everything and switch everything to it. Absolutely. Yet I'd like to see if we can avoid that. Yeah. We may get into RC1 or RC2 and be like, oh, guess what? We took a block of work. You now have to run Wiscop and do everything because the world blew up in some way that we just did not see. But right now it feels like it should be possible. And hey, look, we got a real world case where that we did not plan that someone decided they want to move the firewall extension forward pretty significantly, which is cool, and forced all these questions in the extension space. Yeah, so Chris was trying to make the claim like, you know, let's build our the MSIs on one single stack. So you have to rebuild the whole thing new. And you kind of have to do that already. Um, merge modules add the harder mix because you may be getting merge modules delivered to you from like Wix 3 or Wix 4, you know. So not having that blow up, and they may not be coming from yourself. They may be coming from someone else and go into someone else saying, hey, you deliver this merge module in Wix, you know, four, but because of this change that we took, we can't accept that merge module. So you have to go back and rebuild that merge module with Wix five and then things like that. Don't use people as merge modules. Well, if you're not using other people's merge modules, then don't bother with merge modules. So, um, but that's the topic for tomorrow. So it, this is, I think this is the path through, I think there's probably an interesting case to write the merge module test. I thought you guys were talking about that too, right? Is trying to create a merge module test for this? Yeah. Yep. I think that's probably the most interesting test to see how things go. I'm not worried about the schema namespaces. Um, okay. The, the mixing and matching schema namespaces. For example, I think the firewall one needs to go to five and we have to do the Wix cop work for example. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yes. That, that's what I mean, right? It's like, yeah, it's a breaking change. I think we have to call it out as a breaking change um, because it's like, hey, trust us. It was worth this breaking change. It's better. And then we go from there. Um, yeah, and that's it. I think that's the way through. So okay. the table definition changes. So it has to go with five. There's a breaking change. So schema has to change. Therefore, the, the firewall maybe the only extension that has a schema change with it. All the other extensions may just rev the five and be a very straightforward upgrade from you change the four to a five and you're good to go. No schema changes necessary. Sorry. The, yes. As in they will build against Wix V5. And every, exactly. Everything will but work. They still will look very much like a Wix 4 extension because they're basically the same. Yes. Externally, they are the same. Unless we get another compiler that somehow makes them smaller, faster, more bigger, and, or whatever, right? That, that's well, the only difference, because I mean, they are rebuilt. That's why we're still building them. We're still, we're still building them, and they're against Wix v5, and therefore, a Wix v5 extension would not work with Wix v4. No, it will not. 
which, you know, I'm generally okay with until we actually, you know, kick them out. Until we kick them out? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh the extensions kick, kick out. Oh, out of the product. Yeah. Yes, yes. We kick, 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 kick them out. I thought I was like, who? Depot. Kick who out? <laughs> get the ex- yeah, get the extensions out of the depot and have them running separately. That would, yes, that, that's going to be a good world. And I'd hope and we well, could get there in four. we have to the problem of yes. interfaces. And Correct, yes. And I hope that we could get there in four. But, of course, that was naive that we were going to get that interface right. Um, and even now, maybe the problem is that the extensions assembly is too big. It has junk in it that shouldn't be in there for example, but at the same time, I don't know. It's this is .NET assembly versioning that makes this hard. Yep. And, yeah. You think, you think we can get perfect interfaces and I would argue if it happens, no, it'll be, you know, Wix 10. I, yeah. I don't know. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done bad, right? Yeah, we yeah, made, yeah. I think two interface changes for Wix 5. Yeah. Correct. Which but, is not bad. And and the thing is, it takes me to a conversation I had with Peter Marcu after he left the .NET Core team, like because he was a dev manager for that when it went open source and all that stuff. And then he left and he became a consumer of the .NET Core team by moving to the SDKs team. Mm-hmm. And it a problem that had been told to him became very uh, relevant to him in the SDKs is that .NET versioning is extremely brittle. Yeah. It's extremely, extremely brittle, especially compared to other languages. And since he's building SDKs for many languages, he could compare and contrast other languages to the brittleness of .NET. Mm, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's the same thing we're hitting here in our extensions is the brittleness of the .NET um, interfaces. So we, we may just have to get to a point where like, maybe by Wix 10, maybe earlier, <laughs> we'll get to a place where like, okay, we finally have this. This is good. We don't have to change it, which is what in the end you have to do. So, but right. we'll see. Um, we'll see. I, 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 the, look, we needed to get here. We need to live through this. Yeah. We need to learn the subtleties of our custom actions, our schemas, and our interactions in C Sharp, all three of those layers all together and see how far we can go. I'm yep. a little worried that our error message when you attempt to use a four extension in five or a five extension in Wix four, like if you mix and match extensions, the error messages there could be really poor. So that might be something that we need to look at um, improving. Um, can you, one of us needs to open an issue on that to verify it. I can do that. Okay. Cause I, we really do need to do something in there in case we need to add a better error message. Otherwise people, otherwise I can see really bad error messages if we don't try something there. So uh, there's been a lot of things. I think we covered the space yeah, yeah. So, Painter's right. It'd be easier if we just convert everything to Wix five, but then that's not getting us closer to our goal of not having to do that every time. Um, so, I think we're going to try to see what happens here. You could have a manifest table that says what's merged and right and ice that enforces bad mix and matches. I don't even think we're going to get to the point that an MSI will get built in some of these merge cases. Like, I think we'll have bad error messages earlier than that. Um, so, but we'll see, we'll, we need to go put the tests in and see a, a few more mix and matches when we get to that point. So I think it'll be interesting. It, at least we need to know what the error messages are. If you try to mix and match and see what happens. So. Yep. Agreed. Ah. Does that answer all the questions for this conversation that you were running here with, um, Chris, but, but Bendarski? I think so. Um, there, there will be, there's at least one more um, that he ran into on the, the merge module case that I want to talk to you about, but we don't okay. have to do that on the recording. Okay. Wix deletes firewall extension. Moving on. 7695, generate component ID. Wix 4 does default the component ID to the key path. It's very cool like that. Um, but if a component doesn't follow the rules for generate good, there's no default ID? Really? That sounds mm-hmm. busted. That sounds mm-hmm. busted. I thought this was done in the compiler. Mm-hmm. Although I don't like the way ID generation is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I want to do so much better here. Just didn't get it in four. I'm not going to have time to five. Okay, a generate ID is because we should kill off the default. Component ID is key path ID behavior. 
No, I share it. Yeah, except it's really nice in a log file when the file ID and the component, the key path ID, not just file, the key path ID and the component ID is the same because someone sometimes when a star logs the stupid things as their their component good. Mm. It, it's it is convenient um, when you look at component IDs that are clearly generated file IDs. It's interesting. It, uh, it's less relevant. It, it was more interesting when we had the default flowing behavior. Um, yeah, which I, I, is fraught with peril. I, I know. Yeah, I, I I like that behavior too. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it just it just um, it just tripped me up. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was I was upgrading some V three code and it didn't work. I was like, wait, what? Oh, right, default IDs. Like, how did this ever work? Oh, I forgot. That was a really nice defaulting ID behavior. Although I do like forcing people to specify an ID now. It makes it so much easier. To force easier. it public, right? It's basically, yep. now you have an ID, now you're not counting on this thing. To hook. So anyway, I'm mixed. I do like the fact that the component ID matches the key path ID because that makes the log files generally easier yeah. to it, deal with. That, that, that was, that was kind of tangential to the, to the other behavior, which is that almost everywhere in Wix 4, you can omit ID and one will be generated. This is the only exception. Okay. Well, that sounds but like, okay. Yeah. That's busted. Clearly that's busted and should do better. Yeah. Um, so anyway, put it up for grabs or I, I don't know that I'm going to get to it, but yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's like, yeah, that, that should be better. <laughs> um, but yeah. And, and ideally it just finds the key path ID and solves it kind of thing. That would be the best thing somehow. Well, this this is a case where there is no there there's no magic key path. No magic key path. Wait, what do you mean? You don't have a file? You don't have a oh, you have like just a shortcut. It, there are there are a couple of examples. Yes. But so shortcut be like an example, right? Like yeah. I see. So you, oh, so you have no key path. So all you have is a directory. Right. Oh. Then yeah, we should and, and it's a case where you don't care about the component. Oh, ID. so so anytime that there is a key path, the component ID is defaulted to it. The problem yeah, is when there's I, no key path. Right, right. Uh, okay, we should change the title. Generate component ID when you know there's no key path. Okay, the no key path is the important part. Okay, yeah, should do that. I'm surprised that. How far does it get in the build? Does it Not get through far. linking? Think, no, no. Okay, I, I was going to say. Compiler error. Oh, it's a compiler the, error. The compiler is still checking for val. You know, yeah. Was it possible key path? Yes. And yeah, if, if there isn't one, then I'm pretty sure that's the error. It's it's not a it's not a you know get your okay. binding yeah. to G discover. Give this the... to me. Give this to me. I'll look at that. Okay, that that's that's much more straightforward. I thought this was a lot more involved and things like that. I give that so. Okay, then give this to me. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Fine. Let me look at that. Yep. 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 Okay. I understand better. So this is just when there's no key path, we don't generate component. Yeah, that just sounds busted. That sounds almost like an if case that got lost between the three and four almost. So all right. Not impossible. Not impossible. All right. Have to author an ID when there's no key file. Yeah, we could generate one for you. Oh, can we? Oh, oh, that might be the problem. We might not be able to. Okay, but we could at least impart the error message then. So That's it may true. just turn into like, uh, we don't have enough information to generate you a good ID here, a unique ID, because the key path is going to end up just being the directory, and that's not going to be unique enough. So it may just be need to be a better error message. Okay. Okay. Uh, naked file. Uh, 7696. This is not tagged as a whip. What? Oh. Well, that's not right. Um, yeah. So today. Sorry, Bob. This is yours. I'm not going to steal your thunder. <laughs> um, yeah. So I did a little preamble. Um, we got down in V3 to where if you want a single file component, it's three lines of XML. But two of them are the opening component tag and the closing component tag. And boy, that's just, that seems wasteful, doesn't it? Um, 
So what if we let you skip that? Where today, everywhere you could have a component, you can just have file and let Wix generate the components for you, which is essentially what's happening when you have you know, a component element with no attributes and the closing tag of your three lines. It's just, let's just go ahead and make the compiler smarter and accept that files are components. It's, you know, it, it com comes back to our, our frequent use of, you know, 80% case. 80% of the time, a file with a source attribute is what you need. It doesn't have to be more complex than that. So let's make that case easy. And it turns out it's actually not that difficult. A um, little bit of work in the – little bit of work. Okay, I'm modest. There's quite a bit of work in the compiler. Yeah. Um, but, it's, but it's not that bad. There are a, 10 less – I think – I think there's fewer than 10 places where um, you can reference a component. Um, basically, what I'm proposing here is that wherever there can be a component, you can put a file. There are some things specific to components. We talked about this before. Some things that are specific to components that now need to be handled in this naked file scenario. Um, I, I chose four, fitness, condition, directory, and subdirectory. Um, the directory and subdirectory mean it's, they're, well, they're basically, they're basically shortcuts. They're already shortcuts. Um, but it turns out, thanks to standard directory, um, you can actually author a standard directory as the directory attribute and then subdirectory as um, the well, subdirectory, and you don't actually need any directory elements in your in your Wix authoring for a very very simple package. Just um, a bunch of files, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a bunch of files. If that you have a short list of files, mm -hmm. works out pretty well. Um, everything else that you can specify about a component, I excluded. Um, we can differ about this these two sets. Um, but basically I, my goal here was to cover all the common cases and not care about the obscure cases because component has to remain behind. Um, you know, we can't get rid of it even if, well, we can't get rid of it. There are too many things, um, about, you know, being able to choose your own component composition that, yeah, we can't get rid of it. So it's always available. Um, I figured, you know, if you want to specify your own component good, don't use a naked file. It's out of the scope of naked files. This is having Wix do the work for you. And, the, you know, the rest of it is, okay, everything else you can do with a file, you can still do with a naked file, um, including child elements. Um, I did not extend that to child elements of component. So this proposal is to generate a, a single file component, which falls very closely in line with the current um, star GUIDs. You don't specify a component GUID, Wix can generate one, but it has to be it has to follow certain rules. Single file components, definitely one of those cases. So it's very similar there. Um, the considerations section <clears throat> is kind of interesting. Um, again, I wanted the I wanted Wix to do the work, right? Um, one of the problems that I ran into with this is that if the component ID is generated, um, there's no way to, to reference it, right? You need an ID to reference something. That's just a Wix thing, been the case for about forever. Um, <clears throat> so it would mean that <laughs> I see it. You, could, you could have naked files, but uh, you couldn't get them into anything 
except by authoring them that way. So you could have a component group and the a child of component group could be file and that would work and that would bundle the component, the generated component into that component group and then you could component group ref and everything was great. But that would mean all the other places that you today can ref can create a component, you could not create a naked file. And that last one, package, didn't even occur to me, but again, with you know, depending on your authoring, you can have um, you can have just files listed right under your package element. Then using you know feature um, or feature ref, uh, sorry, feature component ref, component group ref, you can you know then assemble them. So it's like, uh, yeah, that's a that's a good case. Okay, so what could we do? Well, one thing we could do is say, well, the, the you'll get an ID. You give it, sorry, you give your file an ID, and we'll make the component that ID, and then you can just do component ref. Yeah, you have to okay. know it's a component ref, though. Yeah. Well, you have to know it's a component ref, and that's kind of lame, right? So what if, what if we take the file ID? You will have to specify that to know it, and we give that ID to the component and then create this new thing called file ref that can appear where today wherever you have a component ref. But it's really a component ref in the end? I, I, it turns out that you can actually parse it exactly the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, sure. It's just, an, it's just an alias for it, component it's ref. It's another name for component ref. Yep. The thing, the thing is that you can then file ref a component and component ref a file, which is just kind of weird, but... <laughs> Um, as long as the yeah, component, technically that is true because there's going to be no type check across them because it's a component in the end right right mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. end that is what's happening right the compiler is generating the component giving it the same ID so you know uh, but what I about the fault feature but, but what about the fault feature so the default feature feature um, <laughs> meant that you could put file under directory uh -huh. and at link time it would go, Oh, there's a generated component. I will put it into the default feature. Unless you specify one and then it's going to tell you that this has to be put into a feature. Right. Co correct. It, it would then be a normal orphaned component. I'm not, I don't hate that. Oh I'm, no, no. I, I'm sorry. It, the default feet, these are, there, these are two angles, right? The default yeah, feature yeah. feature is still good, but it's independent of naked files. Well, I'm, I'm With sorry. The default feature, it's, I think the naked files are even, you know, that much better because, again, package. I just love the fact that you could list files in your package and with the default feature, they would just show up. Yeah. And, and, and you're I, going to get this four line Wix file. Right. I love and, it. And for that reason, I, I would vote that we don't do any of the component ref file ref stuff. Um, why is that? Basically saying if you want to, if you're going to introduce features, you need to introduce component groups if you're going to use naked files. I basically just go, that's the way to organize your code. Why? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I, I like the default feature feature because I came up with it, but at the same time, I recognize that not everyone can use it. Sure. I, I'm, I, I would not introduce file ref because of the weirdnesses that it, introduces in the language right now off the top of my head my i just the uh, the fact that file ref when you create it is actually going to reference a component is weird <laughs> mm. and it's going to do all the component hookup yeah so it's just weird and we might want file ref <laughs> somewhere else it's it's just it takes a word and makes it component ref yeah. I'm I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not getting your you're you're squidgy about it and I don't I'm not getting that. Yeah, I'm just like I don't wanna I guess I don't wanna burn the word yet. I don't wanna burn the that that element name yet. Um in this behavior yet. I I, I get, let me say this. I would take it in five without the this part here 
can highlight, right? Yes. But I would take it at five without this here and see how far we go. Um, the first part here is just going to work because we're not going to prevent it from working. No, that's not true. We have oh. to explicitly, well, we have to document it. First of all, we have to make it use the file ID, which is not, it's not, you know, automatic. Right, because right now I'm generating. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do a couple, yeah, yeah, but another component ID. But if you use component ref, you have to give it a component ID today too. So, so I'm sorry. I'm... To do a component ref, I mean, what I'm saying is the component, the generated component ID today, today in this proposal is not the same as the file ID. Why? Okay. All right. Well, that I don't agree with. Well, it it could be. Yes. I'm just saying okay. we have to make it so oh. and either hard code it, you know, with a stern comment or document it. Well, in the first bullet, we have to document it and tell people to use component ref. In the second case, we are, we're just, you know, a stern comment so that file ref can do the same thing. But I'm, 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 uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting why you're concerned about using file ref. This would not be the first time in this proposal that, you know, we're reusing an element name. But yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking that the, the 80% case for this particular kind of, this kind of feature is you're not going to specify a feature because your thing is simple enough mm. and you're just going to list, you're just going to list a bunch of files. Yeah. But I, no, I don't agree with that. You I think, don't agree with that. You think people are going to keep Do, using features? I, I don't know, but I, I don't think that they're, I don't think they're as tied to, I think you're tying together the simplicity of both. And I don't think there's a logical connection there. Yes. They're both, you know, in favor of, of simpler authoring, but you know, and yes, I, I, you know, a lot of people can give up their features, but I don't want to lose the benefits of, of simplified file authoring just because, you know, you want to break stuff into features. Oh, ag agreed. So uh, I, I'm with you there. I, I, but if you add features, I'm saying you can also add component groups because you probably should at that point. And then the files can live inside component groups and everything keeps working cleanly that way. I, I don't disagree, but I don't like the idea of us forcing an authoring style when we have so many different ways today that you can author your files. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking if we start here and then grow it after that, I guess that's what I was thinking. Okay. Uh, I, I don't agree entirely with your, with your thinking, but I'm not opposed to, getting rid of some of the, the potential parents just for, uh, wait, I didn't, um, well, okay. Let me put it this way. I do not want to use component ref. I think that's, yeah, I, I I'm fine. If I, we don't, I'm fine. If we don't gross. Yeah. I think I, that's pretty gross. I'm fine with file ref. You don't like file ref. So let's, let's call the whole thing no. off. No referencing. <laughs> so it means that you have to, you, you can use naked file in a feature, a component group, Technically, feature ref, feature group. I mean, you know, the list is there. Um, where where it's parented to something that is already referenceable. See, I, I was prepared to let it live under standard directory and things like that, with the with the idea that default feature would be rescuing all those files in those directories. With the idea being, oh, I need to add a whole a feature now. You add a feature, yeah. like, oh, okay. I have to restructure things because you do. Otherwise, you have to add a whole bunch of component refs. I mean, if you if it was all component file, component file, component file, file, you'd have to add all those component refs suddenly now anyway. So honestly, the best thing to do there again is pick it up, put it in a component group. That's still easier. Um, the case where it's not is like, yeah, I have you know, I have two files tops kind of thing. 
Yeah, I, I, I guess I don't like the idea that this feature is only available if you're using the default feature feature. Well, and that's what I'm it, saying by putting a component group. Well, I, right, but sorry, I, I, I don't like the idea that this feature of being able to use it under package, for example, is only available to you if you're using the default feature feature. I, I, I understand. I, 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 I agree with that. And I think we should see how it goes, I guess, is where I'm at. And the... I, I, I'm very reluctant to get into a see how it goes scenario because we can never take it away. So the, the fix would be then to bring in the ability to reference files directly yeah. under a feature. Like file ref? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I put the second bullet there. Yes, I, I'm. Are you looking I, for a different name? Is the name what bugs you? I no, mean... I, no, I, I, I just don't know. No, it's the, no, <laughs> it's the, I want to kind of shake out the, we're generating components behind the scenes here. Um, first, before referencing them directly. Well, That's okay, what I'm so, trying to, so it's, I, I'm trying yeah. to shake out the creation of components Ah, that's what I'm trying to not reference those naked files directly yet. Uh, as as uh, I'm trying to not reference the generated components from naked files. Okay, that's yet. why I chose. That's why I chose the second bullet. Introducing a new element that today works identically to component ref, but giving us the flexibility to do something different should that become necessary. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, I, I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm thinking of the, if we introduce file ref and people start accidentally using it to do component ref, and then we try to tighten it up later because we, we do something like that. You, you know what I'm saying? So Zach, file ref does not exist today. This, this whole concept of directly referencing files to create the, the higher, the feature tree hierarchy None of that happens today. It's all component based. And the the thing that I'm with is the we're now going to be generating components behind the scenes, which is something we've never done in Wix on purpose. Um, because it's <laughs> it's it's a very it's a very impactful decision. Your componentization is a very impactful decision to install it. So we've never generated components for you. Um, it took us a long time to get to the point where we could generate GUIDs because they are so impactful. We feel like we've got that within a set of rules that we will generate those for you. Um, so the where I'm at is I, I like all of this and I'm just holding, I, I'm just hesitating on the the ability to reference those, co those components, directly referencing those components that we're generating, which is what file ref would let you do through one syntax and which component ref technically will let you do because well, there's just gonna be components out there somewhere. Um, I mean, it, we can prevent that, right? If, if that's important, we can prevent it, right? We can tag the component as being generated and yeah. prevent component ref from working. Um, yeah, I, I, that, that yeah. problem did not occur to me. What problem? The one that I, oh, the, the files across that. Yeah. The components are not files are not components problem. Yeah, but it but yeah, but it would work for components. You're like, hey, look, I have another way of referring to components, and and not that people do it on purpose, or like, I I I don't know. Well, um, yeah, maybe that's why I didn't think of it. But again, <laughs> we can prevent that, right? You know, we can say a file ref. You know, it, this is all doable, right? The, mm -hmm. the problem is references are you know mostly processed in the linker, and therefore, this is not something that you know we can solve entirely in the compiler. Yeah, yeah. So. One thing we're trying to do is avoid adding more groups because groupings are already complex in the Windows installer or in Wix, not in, in Wix. Yeah. Windows, Windows installer doesn't have groupings. Uh, groups are already complex in Wix, and I don't think we get a lot by introducing a new one. 
Um, honestly, I, I like the idea that file can be tossed in feature group because that kind of like says, oh, this is mm -hmm. a feature group. And it's like, ta-da, yay, feature right. group. Right. We don't talk about feature groups hardly at all because, um, well, we should just talk about component groups, but feature groups are are very cool <laughs> in their own way. Um, we just never use them because you only need component groups. It's, it's clear because we focus so much on components. This idea of not focusing so hard on components right. is really cool. Yeah. That's what this is at. And we're just trying to nail this little last little bit of the how much is exposed. And I'm I'm part of me wants to just go out and see what we get with this space without the ability to reference them. Um and see what we hit from there, I guess. That's that's kind of was my thinking. Because I think default feature makes this work really well. And when you add features, then you've added a level of complexity that I was okay with adding component groups. I guess that's where I was. That's the, it's like, oh, if you're adding features, then you're adding component groups. Ta-da, you've, you've, you've inherited two things, or feature groups, actually. You've added features, you're adding feature groups, toss all your files in feature groups. Congratulations. Well, um, I mean. If well, we do file ref, we do want to make sure, I, I think it's important that it cannot reference naked components i think that could bite us i'd i'd worry about people using it as an alias for component ref okay that would be the easy then, way to implement it um yeah uh, it, yeah definitely uh, but but i'd go on the flip side i don't want component ref to pull in a file right which means we have to we, we can't make the component id the same as the file id we could we just have to mark it generate again it's it's the same thing the other way around, but yeah. Well, I I was trying to avoid that because if we did that, then we could have file ref, right? Well, it's basically file ref can reference generate can only reference generate components, and component ref can only reference not generate components. It, they end up being that mutually exclusive that yeah, direction. Sure. Given the fact that file is the only thing that can generate components today, until the future when something else could generate uh, components as well, right? <laughs> like. I don't know, register key. That that that's fraught with a whole bunch of different, you know, peril. Yes. See um, see see bullets further down. Oh, is there? Oh, a number of other things. That's yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm fine with pairing it back. I'm I'll, i I'm a little uh, I, I, I I don't know. It feels weird to me that the default feature feature comes to the rescue. Also, to be clear, part of it is that, you know, the default feature feature is dependent on the research you Yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about the research. I I mean we we will pick a way through it. The question is do I look at it and go, yeah, this is straightforward. I can do the 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 feature that makes it easier to write generally or do we need to write the specific cases yep. specifically that was yep. dumb yeah, yeah i i know what you meant um yeah if the generated component was unreferenceable if you want to reference you have to specify an id and use a file ref as a negative file yeah i think zach's same spot we are yeah i i yeah I think we have the groupings we need. I think I really it's, it really is just a matter of do we introduce a file ref? Because I think we agree that we don't want component refs referring to files and file refs referring to components. That that Agreed. seems like yeah, a bad sure, place. Sure. Oh, I know where I was going. And so, see, a lot of this where I'm struggling is the I'm I have this this getting out of generating. MSI IDs in the compiler, right? So when we can do that, this gets different too, because then mm -hmm. the components, generic components wouldn't have MSI IDs on them, which then they would not be referenceable um, without giving them an ID. Just yeah, transcend I'm, MSI. I'm well, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we are transcending MSI. I mean, like, so, you know, for a lot of you others, like things that Bob and I have seen is that we have the ability to build MSIX packages out of Wix. Like that's a fire giant feature. You can 
do that. Um, and the question is, how many more things can we build to go above and beyond MSI? Because we can, because we have a good language. We believe in language, we have a good tool set. How many more things can we build? Um, this, the thing that holds us back quite often is the MSI um, is things. Oh, and then our own installation engine. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, had those conversations too, but nobody's gonna pay for an installation engine. So that's hard. Um, and I still have Squirrel floating out there to go play with that I've not spent the time there. So it's just an expensive space to get in. And I've been busy with things that are actually paying us to feed the kids that send them to school and all that kind of good stuff. So um, if file ref only can reference files and we component ref can only reference component, then this is, then I'm probably okay with file ref. Okay. Here. I still would try not to, I guess that's the thing. I'm fine with it. I, I almost don't want to document, I don't want to document outside of reference documentation. I don't want to show it as the way. I don't think it's a good way. Like, I don't like component, I don't think people should generally use component ref most times. Like, yeah, just put it in a component group and go right, from right, there. Right, 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 right. So it's like, I don't really want people using file ref. Like, I, I get it, I understand the scenario. I, I totally see why you'd want to have it for the cases that, oh, I'm really glad this exists, but I don't really want most people to go, oh, I need a file ref, so I'll add a file ref. It's like, no, 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 don't, don't. Put it in a component group, put it in a feature group. Honestly, probably should talk about feature groups more. Put it in a feature group and you're done, right? Reference it by the feature you need, carry on. I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with, with, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, there are many, many ways you can construct your files. Yes. Your, your authoring. Okay? Yes. So structure your authoring. Yes. I'm perfectly fine if we make that, um, if we start having opinions, I, right. I embrace opinions like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, the, this whip is all about, you know, the flexibility. I'm fine reducing flexibility if, you know, as long as it's consistent still, right? So that's where I, I get iffy about the default feature feature, especially because we're still talking about it um, by allowing stuff under directory and directory ref and, you know. Um, yeah, but, but I think I'm it... also interested in the default feature feature because, you know, for a lot of people, that's what you're going to get is very little hierarchy and just, you know, flat list of files. Yeah. Like your, your comment that I hadn't considered before, which is standard directory, program files, folder, x86, file, subdirectory, my company name slash whatever, yep. you know, my company name slash my product name or whatever you do, dash, yep. whichever you do, source equals file, ta-da, done, there's my file being installed. And you're like, I have three files, da, da, da. there it is. It's a, you know, a five line Wix file. Yeah, yeah. Ta-da, you are now shipping your five MS, your your three files in a five line Wix file. Yay, have a nice day. Yep. Oh, now it grows. That's fine. You grow up from there. <laughs> yeah. Start simple and you grow up from there. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I will take a look. I, I I'm I'm willing to I think we can tag them and prevent cross contamination of generated components and, and authored components mm -hmm. except uh, but, in the end when they have to be prevented from colliding which is the other fun part about this right 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 because they have to sign an msi that has unique ids for every component but at the same time i'm like yeah okay i'm i'm coming to appreciate the idea of not referencing these and just letting the default feature feature work i'll take a look flip a coin are you okay with either approach yeah yeah I, I yes with the the narrowing which i think we both agreed on from the beginning yeah <laughs> once i brought it up as a concern you're like oh, don't do that like yeah yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course that wouldn't work oh that's gonna take work to make that work oh well. yeah 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 I, I i don't i don't think it's actually a problem except i do appreciate mm. the language purity so mm. i hear you the uh, simple reps Sorry. aren't going to take you as far as you need to go so it's not going to be fun there right 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 and you don't want to need a new ref construct and so it's that's the no, no, agreed. <laughs> I, sorry that's a little bit of the compiler shining through i mean like yeah that's not this is this is a different thing so far i'm pretty sure everything can be done in the compiler so uh, I, I i sorry everything as proposed can be done in the compiler 
the including file ref but all right so yeah, if you cut the, file ref the, because it gets too hard i'm i'm not crying let me be that way okay okay uh, again i'm i don't i don't want to i'm perfectly fine with growing the feature in the future i don't want to try to you know a b test it live deal cool. deal okay so cool yeah if it, of all of this i think that's the hard part okay well the second hard part is that then we're backing up features which we're we sorry we're ordering features ordering features i couldn't do naked file without the default feature feature or i could do the naked file feature without directory directory refragment standard directory package Ooh, yeah yeah module, yeah i i mean yeah that's that yeah that's that's expected yeah, I mean, that would be easy to add those later. Though it's like, all right, right put the file right. limit here, put the call to it, yep. carry on, carry on. That's that's not the hard part in the compiler. No, definitely not. So yeah, if you started with only the other ones, feature group and component group or whatever, it doesn't actually yeah. list the ones that it's under, does it? Mm, no, it doesn't. No. <laughs> so if you start with the list that you know you're going to do, and then the list that you're, uh, that would be nice to have right. here, then there you go. Okay. But yeah, this will be interesting. I'll be curious to see where we start getting to and when we rewrite the tutorial again for Wix 5. Right. <laughs> Yay. Uh, well, again, you know, th this feature, this is the kind of thing that, you know, from just watching Deployment Dojo, I'm like, yeah, the the introduction is rough. Yeah, this is this is this will reduce the concept count significantly. Yeah. Just yep. getting started. Yeah, I like it. That's why I like it. I've always, yeah. As soon as, as soon as we got to the point where we're like, hey, let's generate component components. It's like, that's yeah. crazy. No, we could do it. It's it's We've got a stable enough. We've got enough of the building blocks all around it to be able to do that. It's like, yeah. Yep. Then the only thing that we argued about for a long time was calling it component file. I'm like, I don't want to call it component file. I want the word component gone from yeah. Mango. Yeah. Like, is there a yeah, feature I, where we don't talk about components and if someone talks about components, we know uh, either they're an advanced user or they've gotten lost in some advanced tutorial yep. <laughs> and they shouldn't be there because they're like, yeah, just don't do components. We take care of all that for you now. That would be yeah. great. That's why I, even though I didn't at first, I didn't like the idea of reusing the file element. It looks really good. Yeah, it's the right thing to do. All right. All right. Seven six nine eight bundle icon source file crashes when not an ICO file. Oh, that's sad. It is sad. Uh, I will be in burn. Why don't you, you can give this to me? Unless you really wanted it, I will take it. This since I'm going to be in burn, okay. in the not too distant future. Okay. All right. Last one. This one's fun. Seven seven zero eight. Build output type is ignored. The output type. <laughs> this is so frustrating. So, so frustrating. So frustrating. I just like, I was raging at this thing. Um, uh, all right. Output type is supposed to allow. Yeah. So anyway, you're supposed to be able to specify the output type. So you can output MSIs with different extension names like PKG or whatever you might want to do. And for some uh, weird reason. Yeah. Well, if you need to, like the case that I have, then you can't right. and it doesn't work and everything looks like it works. And then you get an MSI magically, but then when you try to do anything else, uh, bundles or anything else, it all just falls apart. It's like, oh, what the? And then I tracked it down, and it's a really dumb mistake. Um, really dumb mistake. Uh, so there was one one side to this is I remember seeing on like Stack Overflow more than once someone who builds a bundle and then specifies an MSI as the output type, expecting an MSI. This would still. This doesn't change oh. that. Okay. All right. Well, except it does because today you can't do that. If you have a bundle, you will get a bundle. You get oh. an XE. Yeah, that's true. Okay. That's true. You, 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 now, uh, yeah, you actually, now that you mentioned it, this will fix that. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> fix it. You're going to get a package. <laughs> No, 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 no. If you send it into a package, you're going into the MSI backend. No, actually, you'll get a better error message. No, no. Right. This is, if you have an output name of foo.msi, 
uh-huh. but it's built from a bundle entry section. In Wix 3, you get a bundle. Oh, yes. With named foo.msi. Y- yeah. <laughs> and, and MSI exec will not work on it for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no. In, in Wix 4, you'll get, you, uh, it's not a package. So the MSI backend will not find it, the MSI data. It'll be like, no, this is not right. It's going to have all this bundle symbols in it. It'll start throwing up right. all over the place. So yeah, yeah. No, that's better. That's better already. Uh, so anyway, I have the fix for five. I have the fix for 402 to fix this. One is merged. The other is, I just, think, waiting I think for it, you to merge. I think it just finished this. I think I marked you to review it make sure I did the right thing. You things. did, and then GitHub has had some yeah. weird problems today. I've been seeing some people it saying it was having problems. So it, w- it wouldn't let me submit a review. <laughs> fine. Yeah, I saw it had and some problems. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway, so uh, this is an advanced feature. I bet most people aren't using it, except I know some people that are. And so I fixed it, and I felt very embarrassed that that didn't work because it was supposed to. It's all like plumbed through, and then at the end, it just gets dropped. I'm like, oh my goodness, I am an idiot. It turns out that a pipe that just ends is not that useful. It's like you put the data all the way through, except to the point where you, and it's like, oh, jeepers, just dumb. Anyway, I feel dumb about that one. So anyway. Ah, uh, there is triage. I told you triage would be based on however long Bob decided to talk, and he had lots of good things to talk about here. Um, and, and I didn't just and... agree outright, I guess, is probably part of it too, right? <laughs> if I just agree outright, everything goes faster? Well, you have a point. <laughs> All right. Questions, comments, other things people want to talk about. Uh, we're going to push the Wix 402 button next week. Um, hoping, praying that everything is all done like we think it is. Um, and we'll be back in two weeks. That would be the 19th. Um, continuing to talk about things going on in Wix 5 and things getting fixed. I'm hoping to start getting some free time because I need to spend some time in Wix 5 to fix some of the little bugs and the big one that I have. So, um, but I won't be starting that before next meet. So maybe I will, I don't know. I, I'm going to try to put get my whip together for the next meeting. I'll, I'll try to do that. Also look at 7605? Yep, and 7605, the default thing. Get those two together before the next meeting. Hoping I have enough time. Not for the last week. All right, I'm filling time, seeing if anybody has any other questions. Uh, fun things. I think Naked File will be pretty. I think it's the collection of stuff that Bob's working on that will be quite interesting when it comes out. They all, they, they all they do all, feed together. Yes. That's, I was joking. It, well, not joking. Um, you know, it, it's annoying to have them tied together, but they do work really well together. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to be, I think it'll be a good thing. So, all right, let's quiet up there. I'll be in deployment dojo tomorrow at 1230. If you guys want to join me, uh, I think we're done here. So uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Do this again. There'll probably be a 402 running around out there doing things. People can uh, upgrade to it. A lot of you, probably not any of you watching this meeting, but there's still a lot of people that haven't upgraded to 401. It's okay. Don't bother. Just go straight to 402 in a week. (laughs) Or go to 401, then go to 402. Um, Doesn't really matter. All right. Uh, We'll be back in two weeks. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.